97.5 K248 BR Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. The time is 9 p.m. Stay tuned for suspense. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense, a weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in Suspense. Hello, Dad. You didn't tell us you were coming down from New York tonight. Gee, you look white as a ghost. Been working too hard? I'll go get you a damp cloth for your forehead. Don't go upstairs, kid. Keep away from there. What's with you? Doris? On the bed. Is she gone? Yeah. I knew she must be. Her neck. I heard it crack. She asked for it and she got it. You knew? All the time. Guy used to come down when you were up in New York. She'd meet him at the Berkeley Carteret. Then why didn't you tell me? She was your wife. Wouldn't that have looked great? I'll get it. I... I know all the answers. Hello? Hello, Lawrence. It's Gordon. Is Helen there? Uh, no, she hasn't come back from the beach yet. Why don't you pick her up there instead of calling her here at the house? You know where to find her. She won't be back for hours yet, and you don't only have to hang around here waiting. What, so I'm not good enough to come to the house anymore? Uh, no, I, I didn't mean... I didn't mean it like that. I, I just thought it would save you time. Hey, look, you don't have to spell it out for me. Bye. <coughs> Helen's latest junior jerk boyfriend. If he does what I told him, it'll get us a couple hours at least. Oh, what's the use? Better phone the police and get it over with. No! No, I tell you, you're my father. I won't let you. She wasn't worth your life. You know what the doctor said. You haven't much time anyway. Oh, God. What have I done? Look, pull yourself together. We've got to get her out of here. I don't care where it happened, only it didn't happen here. It happened someplace else. Uh, you... You were in New York. No, you are in New York right now. Do you get me? You didn't come down here, just as none of us expected you to. Did anyone see you on the train, at the depot just now, or coming into the house? Anyone who knows you by sight? Uh, I'm not sure. Think hard. Try to remember, will you, Dad? Uh, coming in? No. The street was dead. They were all down at the beach or on the boardwalk. The depot, I'm not sure about. Uh, some of the red caps might know me from sight. But they only see you one day every week. They, they might get mixed up after a day or two in remembering just the exact day. We gotta take a chance and make sure they see you tomorrow when you do come down. That'll cover today. Talk to one of them, lose something, stumble and get helped up, anything at all. Now what about the train? The conductor must know you by sight. Larry, I just remembered something. My commutation ticket. Ah, oh, I forgot all about that. The, the, the date will be punched. We can't get around that. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Just today, uh, something happened that never happened before, all summer. My mind was haywire, I, I guess on account of what I'd found out, but when I got to Penn Station, I found I didn't have it with me. I'd left it in the office, so I had to buy an ordinary ticket to get down here. Then it's a pushover! It's a godsend! It'll be a crime not to take advantage of a break like that! Wait a minute, round trip, I hope. Or will you have to step up and buy a return ticket on this end? It's here. I was so angry, I didn't even notice. <laughs> Round trip. Swell. That unpunched commutation ticket is going to be an A1 alibi in itself. Hang on to it, whatever you do. Now, can you get a hold of someone in the city to pass the evening with you? Or better yet, still two or three friends? I can get in touch with Fred German. He always rolls up a gang of stayouts as he goes along. Good. 
go to a show with them, bend an elbow, get a little lit, stay with them as late as you possibly can manage it. And before you leave them, not after, but before, so they can all see and hear you, call me long distance down there. That means your name will go down in the company's records from that end. I'll have your cue ready for you by that time. If she's not dead yet, then the rot gut made you sentimental and you wanted to talk to your family, that's all. But if I have everything under control by that time, then I'll have bad news for you then and there. You can stage a cloudburst in front of them and continue under your own speed from that point on. But until that happens, watch your step. Don't give them an idea you've got anything on your mind. The better you know people, the better they can tell when something's wrong with you. Now, all that is your job. Mine is upstairs. Got your hat? Yeah. Get back to the station. The six o'clock pulls out in ten minutes. They're starting to drift back from the beach, so go to Charlton Street, one over, and keep your head down. Don't look at anyone. Thank God she wasn't much on getting acquainted with her neighbors. What are you going to do? I don't know. But I don't want an audience for it, whatever it is. All I need is darkness and thinking what a good father you've always been. And I can do the rest. Stand behind the door a minute until I take a squint. Hurry up! Not a living soul in sight. It may not be this way again for the rest of the evening. They all sit on their porches after dark. No, I can't do it. I can't let you. What am I thinking anyway? Letting my own son hold the bag for me? If they nab you doing this, they'll hang it on you. Do you want to go to the electric chair in Trenton? No. Then let me do it my way. Helen, I see her coming. Just turn around the corner. Get back in! Can't make it now. Her eyes are too good. She'll spot you even from a distance. Is Gordon with her? No. Then they missed the connections. I'll send her right out after him. If you're not out of here in five minutes, you don't make that train, and the later you get back, the riskier it gets. As it is, you have three hours you can't account for. Here, get in the coat closet. Be ready to light out the first chance you get. It's just a step to the door. Don't you think the kid would... I don't know. She was pretty chummy with Doris. Get in. Who was that at the door just now, before I got here? Me? Who'd you think? I know, I saw you, but I saw someone else, too, just before. It looked like two people from where I was. Well, it wasn't. What have you been drinking? Oh, you're in a great mood. We need to find you a girlfriend. Doris back yet? No. Good. Then I can swipe some of her face powder while she's out. Hey, what's the big idea? Doris raised Kane just before she went out about your helping yourself to her things. Said she wants it stopped. I don't believe it. That isn't like her at all. I'm going to ask her to her face when she comes back. Hey, it's locked. See? What'd I tell you? She must have locked it and taken the key with her. But if it was already locked, why did you jump up here in such a hurry to keep me out? I didn't want you to find out. It's the devil when trouble starts between the women of the family. Maybe I'm crazy, but I have the funniest feeling that there's something going on around here today. What was the idea of freezing Gordon out when he tried to call for me? You weren't here. I only told him where to find you. And then suggested he pick me up there, not here. Like I'm going out on a date with him wearing a swimsuit. I have enough trouble with that octopus as it is. Look, I was just trying to be helpful. Uh-huh. Doris and Helen's bathroom door, partway open. If Helen should look in... Have to get Doris's body behind the bed. She's straightening up Doris's bed. Why doesn't she try doing that to her own bed? <sighs> now what? If it's Gordon, tell him I'm ready to leave now. And stop being so impatient. Hello? Mrs. Weeks, please. Oh, it's him. The guy Doris was cheating with. Uh, she's gone out, but she left a message in case anyone called up for her. Only, I don't know if you're the right party. Who is this? 
I... I'm Helen's boyfriend, Gordon. How is it you're there alone? I'm not. Helen's here with me, but she's upstairs dressing. I can't come to the phone, so she asked me to give the message. Well, what is it? This is the right party. Well, um, Mrs. Weeks was called out this afternoon. Some people dropped in from the city, and, and she couldn't get away from them. She said if anyone called, she'd gone to the Pine Tree Inn for dinner. You know where that is? Yeah, it's a little way out on the road to Lakewood. Oh, these people are only passing through. They're not staying. She'll be free at about 9.30. You see, they're not bringing her back, so she thought if you wanted to pick her up with your car out there, otherwise she'd have to phone for a taxi and wait until it got out there. Yeah, I could do that. You sure she said she'll be free 9.30, right? That's the time Helen told me to say. Oh, I, I nearly forgot. Uh, she said you don't have to drive right up to the place if you don't feel like it. You can sound your horn from the clump of pines down the road. You can wait there. She'll come out to you. Who are you talking to? Uh, uh a sweetie of mine. Have a heart. Don't listen. <laughs> it looks like you've got it bad. I wish you could see yourself. All right, I'll do that. You sure you got the message straight now? Absolutely. Just like I told you. All right, thanks. Give her my love. Uh, there's a fresh dame here. Sends her love, honey. <laughs> oh, but she's, she's not as pretty as you are. It was your party, pal, and you're gonna pay for it. Not Dad. Eight fifteen, and I still don't know how to get Doris over to the Pine Tree Inn. Ow! Cigarette burned right down to nothing, and I got ashes on the rug. Wait. That gives me an idea. Sarukian carpet cleaners. Sarukians. Uh, yes, Rukians. How late do you guys stay open tonight? We close at six. Well, look, if I bring it over myself tonight, will you... Will there be someone to take it in? I'll just leave it with you tonight, and you don't need to start work on it until you're ready. No, we'll be open at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. I, I... I won't have time in the morning, and it's got to be attended to. Ah, okay. Bring it around the back and ring the bell. Someone will come down and get it. <sighs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Some ink on the rug. And now to get Doris all bundled up nice and tight, wrapped up in this rug. And some cushions stuffed on both ends. There. That looks pretty secure. Ooh, thought of something else. This wristwatch has Doris's name on it. I'll make sure to put it in Loverboy's car just to make things easier for the cops. Get a grip, Larry boy. From now on, don't think. Let your reflexes work for you. This is a rug. I'm taking it to the cleaners. People taking rugs to the cleaners don't go along scared of their own shadows. Good evening, Larry. What on earth are you doing? Trying to reduce? Um, evening, Mrs. McGillicuddy. Uh, gotta take this rug to the cleaners. <laughs> nice stars. At this hour? Oh, I'll catch it if I don't. I was filling my fountain pen just now and got ink all over it. Oh, uh, see, see you later. See you later, Larry. Nice young fellow. But that stepmother of his, oi. <sighs> Go to it. You'll have more to talk about in a little while. Evening, Larry. Uh, evening, Mr. Ho. Taking your rug out for a walk? Oh, uh, I was filling my fountain pen and got ink all over it. Taking a day clean before I catch Dickens for it. Ooh, it looks heavy. Oh, not so bad. See you, Mr. Ho. See you, Larry. Oh, come on. Larry? Hi, Helen. Gordon. What are you doing with our living room rug? I... 
I was filling my fountain pen, and I got ink all over it. I thought I could get it clean before I got balled out. Oh, they'll charge you an arm and a leg for that. We've got a can of wonderful stuff back at the house. I'm sure we can get it out. Let me look. No, I, I, I don't want to undo it. I'll never get it back together again if I do. Uh, what's that bulge in the middle there? Uh, sofa pillows. They got spotted, too. <laughs> That's some fountain pen, fella. How come you didn't get it all over your hands? I was holding the pen out in front of me, and it squirted all over everything. <laughs> oh. Larry, your face is dripping. You try toting this on a warm night and see how it feels. Come on, Helen. God, I, I thought we were going to go to the movies. Anyway, we're spinning our wheels here. Yeah. Hey, is Doris home yet? No, she isn't home. Hey, wait a second! Since when do you have a fountain pen? Good evening, Larry. What you carry in there? Oh, doesn't anyone watch TV? Hi, Miss Renfield. Going camping? Nah, I gotta get this rug out to the pine tree inn for the manager's office. Somebody got sick all over it and he had to send it in to be cleaned. Now he's raising hell. Can't wait till tomorrow. Wants it back right tonight. Well, get it in the back. Who do you work for? Sarukian, an Armenian firm. What's the matter? Ain't they even got their own delivery truck? We used to, but we gave it up. Business been bad. It got the time? I'm supposed to get there by 9.30. Uh, it's about 9. Who do you think you're kidding? Uh, I, I don't get you. <laughs> you ain't delivering that nowhere. Whatever it is, it's hot. You swiped it. Now you're taking it somewhere to sell it. <laughs> how, how do you figure that? I wasn't born yesterday. Well, uh, thanks for the lift. I'll be leaving you here. All right, bud. If that's how you feel about it. I said I wanted to get off. So get off already. Ugh. Scraped up a little, but I don't think I broke anything. And there's the pine tree in. Come on, Doris. We have a date to keep. What's taking her so long? And there's your dream boat now. Now's my chance. Into the back you go. Now you're set for your last joyride, Doris. And now to leave her wristwatch in the back seat. Here he comes. <gasps> A cab! Where to? Back to town and step on it. I'm expecting a phone call. Dad! I took the next train back. 
I'd come to my senses by the time I got there. What kind of a heel do you take me for anyway? I couldn't go through with it. Let you shoulder the blame that way? So I've been through all that for nothing? You haven't phoned in yet or anything, have you? No, no. I was waiting for you to come back. I thought maybe you'd walk over to the station house with me. I'm not much of a hero. No use arguing about it. My mind's made up. If you won't come with me, I'm gonna go alone. I'll go with you. Might as well. I made a mess of it anyway. It never would have held together. The whole thing came out wrong. I forgot about the rug I carried her in. Left it there under the trees. A dozen people saw me with it, including Helen. I told the taxi driver I was expecting a phone call, and that alone would have damaged your alibi. How was I supposed to know you were going to call if it wasn't a setup? And last of all, my prints are all over the wristwatch. A big help I turned out to be. Okay, let's go. And do me a favor, will ya? Kick me every step of the way getting there. Wait here, why don't you? I'll go in and break it for you. That'll be the easiest way. Okay, Larry. Well, young fella, what's your trouble? Uh, the name is Weeks, and it's about Doris Weeks, my stepmother. Came to report a missing, is that it? Recognize this? That's hers. Yeah, the name's on it. That's the only thing we had to go by. She's pretty badly hurt, young fella. She's dead? Yeah, she is. I didn't want to tell you too suddenly, but you may as well know. Car smash up only half an hour ago. Guy with her must have been driving stewed or without lights. Anyway, a truck hit them and they turned over. He was thrown clear but died instantly of a broken neck. She was caught under the car and it caught fire and... Well... There wasn't very much to go by after it was over, except this wristwatch, which fell out on the roadway in some way. So it was an accident. Uh, m my father's outside. I should go out and tell him what happened. Huh? Oh, sure. Dad! I'm sorry, kid. I just couldn't wait any longer. I had to come in and get it over with before I lost my nerve. But, Dad, you don't have to do it now! Officer! I'm a murderer. Dad, no! What? I'm guilty of murdering my wife, Doris Weeks. So ends The Corpse and the Kid by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions and recorded at Melrose Music in Hollywood, California. Tonight's radio drama was adapted for radio by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes from the short story by Cornell Woolrich. Matt Frazier was Larry. Jonathan Goldstein was Mr. Weeks. Camden Singer was Helen Weeks. Vic Mignogno was Gordon. Rick Fetterman was Slick. Dana Perry Hayes was Mrs. McGillicuddy. Damon Crawl is the trucker. Talon Beeson was Sarokian, and Steve Brown was the sergeant. I'm your host, Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in... Suspense. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all curious about the future. Of course you are. After all, the future is where each and every one of us will be spending our future lives in the future. But who knows about the future? Only Count Marco knows. And so, I invite...
invite you, my friends, to pose your questions to the world's greatest predictionist, Count Marco. You, madam, with the most splendid chapeau. Count Marco, when will we first visit another planet? Count Marco predicts that in 1970, a rocket ship will visit our nearest neighbor, Venus. There, we will find it populated entirely by women. And within ten years, millions of eligible bachelors from around the globe will have moved to Venus, causing a shortage of men here on Earth. Uh, the gentleman with the handlebar mustache. Will the Yetzel become the top-selling automobile in 1959? Mmm, Count Marco predicts that it will. In fact... Edsel will unveil the very first flying car in 1965, cornering the market for years and driving all other American motor companies overseas to sell their inferior ground-confined wares in Siam and the Belgian Congo. Sir, in the third row. Will Hawaii or Alaska become the next American state? Ah, Count Marco predicts that it will be neither... Rather, it will be our good neighbor to the south, Cuba, with a government amenable to American interests and a vast wealth of sugar cane. Cuba will be an integral part of the United States of America for decades to come. You, madam, in the, uh, pantsuit. Count Marco, will television or motion picture be the most popular form of entertainment in this next decade? Count Marco predicts that radio will regain its preeminence in just three years hence. Motion pictures will become so expensive that only millionaires will be able to afford tickets, while television will be revealed to be just a fad. Nothing more than a collection of intellect-deadening drivel designed to appeal to the lowest common denominator. But radio... Yes, Radio appeals to the imagination of the American populace. The gentleman in the garish striped sport coat. Which horse will win the Kentucky Derby this year? The fastest one. Uh, uh, you with the exceedingly itchy scalp. Hey, what sort of cockamamie answer is that? Count Marco does not waste his supernatural gifts on such trivialities. If you wish to know that, my couture challenged friend, I suggest you consult a bookmaker. Oh, wise guy, eh? Why, I ought to come up there and suck you in a jaw. Count Marco predicts that you will be escorted from the world-famous Pacific Grand Theater by two stalwart members of Los Angeles' finest. Hey, 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 get your mitts off of me, lousy coppers. Count Marco predicts that you will all tune in again next week. Until then, dear friends, I bid you farewell and fair predictioning. Nomi Prince, former Wall Street executive, Current investigative journalist has just brought out a new book, Collusion, How Central Bankers Rigged the World. She has that rare combination of deep knowledge and brilliant writing. Her new work throws unflinching light on the power players and dark conspiracies of international finance. Nomi Prince will speak on Sunday evening, May 6th, 7.30 at St. John's Presbyterian Church, 2727 College Avenue in Berkeley. There's wheelchair access at this KPFA benefit. Vilma V. will host. Get tickets at independent bookstores or online at brownpapertickets.com. For Nomi Prins, May 6th. Alice Wall.
Walker says about Norman Finkelstein, this is the voice I listen for when I want to learn the deepest reality about Jews, Zionists, Israelis, and Palestinians. There's no one else like him today. But in my bones, I know this incredible warrior for humanity and justice is an archetype that has always been. Norman Finkelstein, 